Thank you, Bell Choir. That was so lovely. And good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here at St. Joe First United Methodist Church. Whether you're here in the sanctuary or you're joining us online, we are so glad that you chose to worship with us this morning. My name is Kim O'Haver, and I'm serving as worship greeter today. This morning's verses come from Psalm 130, verses 5 and 7. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. Now before we begin our service of worship this morning, I would like to point out the hunger kettle here at the front of the sanctuary. You may bring your donations up as we sing our opening hymn. The money that we raise through these donations goes to support our monthly work at the soup kitchen, as well as other efforts to eliminate hunger in the wider community. And now let's praise God in song. We will sing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. This is found on page 196 of your hymnals, or you may follow along with the words on the screen. We will sing verses 1 and 2. Please stand if you wish and as you are able. Amen. And now let's join together in reciting an Advent prayer. It's number 201 in your hymnals, or once again, you may follow along with the words on the screen. Let's join in prayer together. Merciful God, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may celebrate aright the commemoration of the Nativity, and may await with joy the coming in glory of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
You may be seated. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Pastor Dan, the senior pastor here, and we welcome you to this time of worship. Today being the first Sunday in Advent, we are going to light the Advent candle of hope this morning. And I want to share an Advent reading with you. It says this, In the days of exile and uncertainty, the prophet Isaiah cried out, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire set twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. In the midst of our own encounters with uncertainty and upheaval and our longing for deliverance, Jesus calls to us, therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. We light this candle as a sign of our, of our hope amidst tragedy and adversity. May we stay awake to God's activity in the world as we wait in expectation that even now God is with us, working to restore us to the fullness of life with God and with one another. Amen. At this time, I want to invite you to pay attention to the screens as we're going to have our video announcements. I hope you'll get involved in all the ministries and programs and, and missions that we have going on here at the church at this time. Enjoy the video announcements. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Thanks so much for choosing to worship with us, whether you're here online or in person. We're just so glad that you're here. If it's your first time worshiping with us, fill out one of our connection cards found in the pew back in front of you or online. That way we can stay connected with you and get you plugged in. If you, a family member, or a loved one needs prayers, fill out one of our prayer forms also found in front of you or online so we can be praying over you as a staff. Just a few announcements before we get started. The first is a reminder that Stoke Youth Group is tonight at 7. We can't wait to see you guys there. And Spark for our pre-K through 5th grade friends is this Thursday at 6. See you then. We still have some room for our couples retreat coming up in January. Kim Risk needs a $75 deposit by December 12th, so that's coming up quickly. If you want some more information about this retreat and what that will look like, you can contact Kim Risk or the office. Outside of the office is a bin for socks. Um, this time of the year, people definitely need things to keep them warm. So we are doing a sock drive for the month of December. All of these socks are going to go to the soup kitchen for people who need them. So if you'd like to donate new socks, you can set them there, and we thank you in advance. The Women's Group Dinner Divas is meeting this month, December 14th at 6 p.m. at Grand Mere Inn. They're going to be celebrating Judy Thompson's birthday, and it's going to be a great time. If you have any questions or you want to have a conversation, you can contact Renee Foote or the church office. Next Sunday is our cantata and our second Sunday brunch. There are going to be so many people here to listen to the beautiful music, and there are going to be so many musicians here. So we want to make this brunch really big, but we can't do it without you guys. It is a potluck, so bring your favorite breakfast or lunch meal to pass, and we can't wait to see you there. Last but certainly not least, today starts Advent, and we are super excited about it. The staff really wanted to do something for the congregation, especially during the hard times that we're in. And so we created a 21 Days of Advent prayer booklet. It's a little devotional that we hope you will take to your friends and family and do personally as well. And every single day has a new topic um, to be praying over. It has a scripture, it has a spot for your personal thoughts, and then a guided prayer. And we wanted to do this to just be united as a congregation and be in a season of prayer as we should be um, in Advent. So we hope you'll take those booklets and we hope you enjoy them. That's definitely enough announcements for this morning. Let's continue to worship. As we prepare our hearts for prayer, let's join together in singing number 219 in the hymnals. What child is this? You may remain seated. We will sing all three verses.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for another Sunday. We thank you that it's December and it's the Advent season. And most importantly, we thank you that, Jesus, you came to earth as our Messiah. And you came in a humble way, a way that we would never expect. And yet you're still a mighty and powerful king, God. And we thank you for that and how good you are. Lord, help us to remember as we go throughout this season that you are the real reason we celebrate, the reason we get together with family, the reason we give gifts and we sing these songs and we come together. Lord, it's all because of you and what you have done for your people because you love us so much. Jesus, thank you for being willing to come in a humble way knowing that you would be mocked for the way you came, knowing that people wouldn't believe you because of the way you came. Lord, but you are right and perfect and pure, and you know the only way. Jesus, we thank you for your life, that you came and you taught, and you taught us how to live, and you were an example for us and for so many people, and you will continue to be for many and many years, God, and we thank you for your word, that there were people there that wrote down what they saw, what they heard you say, what you have done, and that we get to witness and read about all of you through stories, through prophecies, through all of these things, God, and we just get to know you better, and we ask that you draw us near to you, God. Give us a desire for your word and for who you are, for your teaching, even for your conviction, Spirit. Give us a desire for more of you because you are good. Help us to trust you no matter what season we're in, whether we're struggling mentally or physically, financially, God. You are a provider. You are a healer. Lord, we pray for those who need healing inside and outside of this room, whether that be physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual, God. We pray that you lay your hands on people in need of healing so that they can truly be healed and praise you. And Lord, help us to understand that you have a will and a plan, and healing looks different for everyone. And when we don't receive healing that looks the way we wanted it to, help us to still trust you and lean on you and understand that your will is good no matter what. Lord, provide for those who are struggling financially, especially as we come into the Christmas season. God, we know that so many people struggle to give their kids presents or put up a Christmas tree or just continue to pay rent. Whatever it is, God, we ask that you provide for us financially, provide for us individually, and provide for our church. Lord, bring finances in wherever those come from, but ultimately, Lord, we know they come from you, and help us to remember that we trust you that those finances will come when they need to come and where they need to come, God. Continue to grow us and shape us as we move throughout this season, show us more of who you are, Jesus, and reveal yourself to us in a way that we haven't seen before, God. Prepare our hearts for Christmas. Make our hearts soft. Open our ears and eyes to you, God. And let this season be different from any other season that we've experienced before. Bring us closer and bring us deeper and challenge us in our faith. Lord, thank you that you brought hope, that you brought peace, that you brought joy, that you brought love when you were born. We can't understand who you are fully, and we still thank you for that. Lord, remind us that you are constantly teaching us, that your word is everlasting and eternal that it is constantly doing things in us. And Lord, thank you that we have a relationship that we can come and just talk to you, or we can tell you our concerns, or we can ask for whatever it is that we're in need of, or we can be angry, or we can be sad, and you can handle it, God, because you just want to have a conversation with us, and you just want to have a relationship with us, and we thank you, God, 
We thank you for the gift of prayer. We know that where two or more are gathered in your name, that you are there and that you answer prayers. We've seen it before and we will see it again and again. And Lord Jesus, thank you for teaching us how to pray and saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now please enjoy this special music. I just wanted to remind you, there's a concert this afternoon here in the, in the sanctuary. Um, the choirs from LMC, Lake Michigan College, will be presenting a program at 3, and you're welcome to come and join us. It should be a fun Christmas program. Um, I also want to just reiterate about the, those um, Advent prayer guides. There are books in the back. They're also online, aren't they? So there are multiple ways to get that. I would encourage you to really do this. Um, it, it's a encouragement to me to know how many of you are praying for me <laughs> as well as the staff and for all of us but um prayer is what is has been our greatest strength so we want to fall on that at this time of the year it's just a great practice even during advent so i would encourage you to be sure to get a booklet now we'll sing <laughs> once i get on
Good to see you guys. My name is Savannah. I'm the video announcement girl, or <laughs> I also serve as director of congregational care here, if you didn't know. I'm super glad to be up here. And we've said it like five times already, but I already wrote it in. It's the first Sunday of Advent. Um, we're really excited for the Advent season. We're really excited about the Advent booklet, um, like we've said. And as you can tell, the sanctuary looks beautiful. So. This is my favorite time of the year, 100%. I have had my Christmas tree up since, no lie, before Halloween. Um, so it's my, I'm so excited to be here finally because people give me a, a lot of, you know, <laughs> a lot of trouble for that. But really glad to be up here. Um, and we're really excited um, to just be focusing on the story of our Messiah, the best story ever. And um, throughout this Advent season, we wanted to, of course, be focusing on the story of Christ's birth, but we really wanted to focus on the things that Christ brought with him when he was born. Um, because the fact that Jesus came was the biggest and most important thing, right? But he also brought so much more than we can imagine. Um, his mission was to bring salvation, but it also was to bring other things that we lack without him. And so this week, we are learning about how Jesus came to bring hope as we light the first candle um, of Advent that represents hope. And so our scripture this morning comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. This is a pretty popular passage, um, so it might sound familiar. I'm going to be reading out of the NASB version. It will be on the screen, and it says this. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul a hope both sure and reliable, and one which enters within the veil, where Jesus has entered as a forerunner for us, having become a high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. So Jesus came to bring hope. And now I always like to um, put our scripture into context before we break it down um, to just help us better understand. So the author of the book of Hebrews is unknown, actually. Um, there are some theories out there. Some of us think it, it, the author is Paul um, because he actually wrote most of the New Testament and it, the writing style is kind of similar in the book of Hebrews. Um, there are some really good arguments for actually a woman author and some other um, apostles, but we're kind of, it's kind of unknown. We do know, though, however, that the author was a believer and they were a Jewish Christian that had that background um, <clears throat> because the book of Hebrews 
really is about Jesus. And the entire book goes into description about how Jesus has served as this high priest now in his life and his death and his resurrection and what that means for us as believers. And so in chapter six, before we get to our verses, since we're at the end of the book actually, um, the author is focusing on how Jesus has filled every requirement to be the high priest, um, which was this position as a Jewish, Jewish person to be the one that goes into the Holy of Holies in the Jewish temple. Um, <clears throat> and so he says how Jesus has made all of these requirements, he's filled all of these requirements, and yet these believers that he's writing to are still dull of hearing. And the author finishes the chapter by instructing believers to diligently press on to maturity and faith so that we can fully realize this hope and assurance that we have as believers. And so the first thing I want us to know this morning <clears throat> is that the hope that Jesus brings is a result of mature faith in Christ. We know the book of Hebrews was written for Jewish Christians or believers because of the messages of Christ fulfilling his role as a high priest, and it says we already know this, and also because of the encouragement to persevere in faith. And in the end of chapter 5, the author kind of calls out the audience um, of believers by calling them immature and dull of hearing, which is not fun to hear. It says, by this time you should probably be teachers even, but you need to be taught the elementary principles again. It says, like needing milk instead of solid food. And people who drink milk are unacquainted with righteousness because they're infants, they can't understand it. The author goes on by saying, solid food is for the mature. The one who has practiced their senses well to be able to distinguish between good and evil. So right now it's kind of depressing, right? The author's calling everyone out and kind of just saying they're immature and basically that they're lacking in their beliefs and their faith. But then the author starts chapter six with therefore. They write, therefore, let's press on to maturity. Let's leave behind the ways of the immature believer and let's diligently press towards maturity in our beliefs. And in doing so, the author states that we realize the full assurance that hope gives us. The author puts this in a cause and effect. The author has been explaining all the, thing, all the things that Jesus has done for us by going to the cross, but then they say, you are immature, so press on towards maturity and faith so that you can receive the full assurance of hope. See, hope is the result of mature faith in Christ and what he has done. And to illustrate this, growing up I was never really athletic. <clears throat> I swam um, when I was really little, and then I did dance up until college, but never into sports, just could not be me, um, super not athletic. Um, and when I moved to college, I wasn't dancing anymore, and I wasn't working out, and so, you know, there's a thing called freshman 15, and that started to happen, and I didn't like that. <laughs> And um, so I started going to the gym, but I like literally had no idea what I was doing. Um, I'm sure there were people there that were a little concerned about me and could tell that I was a beginner um, in lifting because there's a certain way to do it. You have to be careful with your body. You don't just go and like lift 800 pounds, you know. Um, that couldn't be me anyway. But um, I remember getting really upset about just like not seeing results and just not being at the place that I wanted to and I didn't understand like the point of going anymore. Like it wasn't worth it to me because if I'm not gonna see results and I'm not gonna put myself through all of this hard work. Um, but there were some friends around at the time that were going and so I decided to keep going and keep lifting and I decided like I'm gonna teach myself so I did like all my research on how to properly lift and like take care of your body and how to find out like what eating is good for you. And so I did that and I could just feel the difference in my mindset. 
I had this hope now that I was going to reach my goals and I was going to be healthy like I wanted to, and so I kept going. And eventually, actually, people started coming to me like for lifting advice or for plans even for them. Um, and I just got better and I, my hope for myself even started to grow. And I think sometimes we think of hope as this thing that we just have. We don't really think of it as something that we can obtain after we've decided to press on or after we've decided to keep going. When we, but the scripture says when we press on towards mature faith in Christ, we then start to understand the things we have been taught by, about Christ dozens and dozen times again. We can finally experience the hope that Christ has set before us for our lives and for the death and for the life to come. When we keep pressing on, that's when we receive this hope. Are you still drinking milk when you could be eating food? Have you been listening to the same elementary principles over and over again without actually doing anything about it? Have you been stagnant in your learning in Christ? Have you been pushing yourself to understand more? The author writes that we are to diligently press towards maturity. Are you diligent? Do you think you're ready for solid food? Or do you have hope? Do you realize the full assurance that hope gives you? Think about what you want to know more about. Are there things you just always wondered about or just didn't make sense to you? And I encourage you to do your research. There's always going to be things that we don't understand about Christ, and that's the point of the message, to diligently keep pressing on, to mature in our faith. Ask God for answers. Ask one of the staff. Have a conversation. Research a topic on where to find it in scripture and study that part. Hope is the result of a mature faith in Christ. And the second point I have for us today is that the hope that Jesus came to bring is an anchor for our souls. And the scripture speaks for itself. Verse 19 says, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, a hope of sure and reliable or steadfast and now hope here in the original language um, is probably what has we would define it. Um, it means confidence or expectation. Hope is confidence and expectation in ourselves, in others, in ministry, in God, in eternal life. And that makes sense, right? When we have a mature faith in Christ and know him well, it gives us this confidence that we are children of God, that he loves us, that we will spend eternal life with him. So this confidence and expectation that we have because of Jesus is an anchor for our souls that is sure and steadfast. The author here really is driving home um, with the point with all these definite, like strong words, right? Hope, which is confidence, expectation, anchor, sure, reliable, steadfast. These are words that are strong and grounded. And that is what the author is saying hope is for us. It is sure. Being sure of something doesn't mean you question or you're insecure. It is reliable. It doesn't mean that it's short or unreliable. This hope that Jesus has brought for us through faith in him is certain. It is reliable, it is firm, it is strong. And something interesting as well is that the anchor here refers to an actual anchor like you would use for a boat. Um, but the meaning of where we actually get anchor means arm. An anchor in the original Greek language here um, means arm that was bent or crooked at the elbow. And so when we get a picture, when we picture this, we get this illustration as someone holding out their arm for us to hold on to. That's your anchor. Hope is what we hold on to because it is so sure and so steadfast, so strong and so certain. And that is what keeps our soul strong and unmovable. And I couldn't think of a better way to illustrate this um, than the story Jesus told himself in Matthew 7 on the Sermon on the Mount. 
he tells this story about a man who built his house on the sand. And a big storm came, and the wind crashed against the house, and the floods rose up, and the house crashed. And Jesus says that the collapse of the house was great. And then he goes on to say that there was another man, though, that built his house on the rock. And during that same storm, the winds crashed against his house, and the floods came up, but it did not fall because of the rock-solid foundation. The hope that Jesus has brought to us is what allows us to have winds crash against us and floods rise up against us while we stay put. Our confidence and expectation in Christ is sure and steadfast that will not give way to the storms of life. Our hope anchors our soul so that they are unshakable and unmovable. Our hope grounds our souls. The winds go this way and that way, but we will not when we are anchored. Do you feel anchored in your hope? Or do you feel shaken, moved when winds and floods come? Do you easily get swayed with the wind and the storms of life? Or do you have confidence and expectation? It's hard to stay hopeful in the world that we live in, especially. Through war, genocide, hate, racism, violence, depression, anxiety, it is hard to stay hopeful. But God tells us the kind of hope that he gives us through Jesus is not one that bows down, shies away, moves or crumbles. Jesus gives us hope that is sure and steadfast. The fact that Jesus was born, lived a perfect life, taught us how to live, died for our sins, resurrected, it should give us hope. It is faith through Jesus that gives us hope that is an anchor or a crooked arm to hold on to. If you feel like you have not been experiencing this type of hope, it's time to. You can experience it by reading the Gospels about Jesus, about what he taught, his life, his ministry, by pressing on towards mature faith in Christ. Now, our third and last little nugget this morning is that hope gives us the confidence to enter into the presence of God. The second part of verse 19 and going into verse 20 says, a hope both sure and reliable and one which enters within the veil where Jesus has entered as a forerunner for us having become a high priest forever forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. And this scripture can get a little like confusing and hard to break down because there's a lot that's going on here that the the author is saying. And so I'm gonna try to break it down the best of my ability Sometimes I like read things over and over and it becomes confusing to yourself, you know? So just follow closely along. So this part of scripture, the veil that the author is referring to is the door screen into the most holy place, which is what we talked about earlier, where that high priest goes. The place that only a high priest could enter since God dwelled there. The Jewish temple, there were certain places that only certain people could go, and there were like levels of holy. And so the holy of holies, or the most holy place, was the place that God decided he was actually going to dwell in. And so only the high priest could enter there. And he would do that around once a year to offer sacrifices for atonement on behalf of the entire Jewish people. And he was appointed into that place. And like I said earlier, the author has been writing about how Jesus became the ultimate high priest since he offered himself as a sacrifice for atonement on behalf of everyone when he went to the cross. And that is when we hear about how Jesus tore the veil. When Jesus died on the cross, scripture says the temple crumbled and the veil literally tore in half. Because Jesus died for all people to be able to enter into that most holy of places. Not just the high priest anymore. This is what the author is meaning in verse 20 as well when they write that Jesus entered into the veil as a forerunner for us, becoming the high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is mentioned in Genesis. He's like the first high priest we get to hear about. 
and there's a whole line of high priests, and it goes up until Jesus, and he's the high priest forever. So, the scripture this morning is telling us that not only do we have a hope that is anchoring us, but it gives us confidence to enter within the veil now, into the most holy of places where God dwells, where people have been denied before. We don't have to be high priests because we have faith in Christ. And that mature faith in Christ is what gives us this assurance of hope. We have the confidence that anchors our souls to be able to enter into the presence of God. And because with our faith in Christ, it gives us the ability to dwell with God. It's all connecting. Our faith gives us hope, and our hope gives us confidence that we can dwell with a perfect, mighty, powerful God here on earth and for eternity. Our hope allows us to enter within the veil. Have you ever wanted to be invited somewhere or to something? I think we've all been there where we've wanted an invitation somewhere and we didn't get it. Or even if you've been aware about a gathering or something um, and you know where it is and you want to be able to go but you didn't get the invite, you wouldn't have the confidence or assurance to just join in because you weren't invited. If someone called you out on it, you probably wouldn't have the assurance to say, no, like I really was invited, I'm supposed to be here. But what about when you were invited somewhere? Did you have the confidence then? That is what hope does for us. It's the assurance that we belong in the presence of God. We have mature faith in Christ, and so we have a hope that is sure and steadfast and an anchor to be able to enter into a place that is holy, where only people who, have, who also share that mature faith in Christ can enter. Do you have confidence to enter within the veil? Do you have the assurance that you belong in the presence of a most holy God? If you have faith in Christ, the answer should be yes. Jesus came to bring hope. And that hope is what anchors our soul in a sure way. If you have been struggling to experience hope, if you're unsure or you're not confident you can enter within the veil, just like the author wrote, let us press diligently onward to maturity and faith. I encourage and challenge us all this morning to evaluate our levels of hope to evaluate our levels of maturity and faith, to evaluate our assurance and confidence to enter within the veil. And as you go throughout this week, diligently press forward onto mature faith in Christ by reading the Gospels again and again and asking God to strengthen your faith. Write down some things like doubts, fears, questions that make it hard to stay put and anchor down when storms come. Ask God to remove those things for you. And remind yourself whether you leave yourself notes or write down certain verses that you have confidence to be in the presence of a holy, mighty, all-powerful, all-knowing God. Now and when we all pass someday. Jesus came to bring us hope and a great hope. A hope that is an anchor, hope that helps us remember the goodness of God when storms come. Hope is what helps us keep pressing forward when the fight is hard. Hope is what keeps us praying, what keeps us working, what keeps us serving, serving what keeps us worshiping. Because without hope, what's the point, right? Without hope, we have almost nothing. Hope is what keeps us sharing Christ with others. Hope is what keeps us sharing love with others because we hope for the day when Christ returns, when there will be no sorrow and no sadness, but only joy. In this Advent season, let us remember that Jesus came to bring us hope. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that you are a God of hope. Lord, when you came thousands of years ago in a barn, you came for salvation, you came for peace and love and joy, but you came for hope 
as well. So your people can have the assurance to enter within the veil and be in the presence with you. God, we thank you that you are a God of hope. Lord, strengthen our faith so we can experience the full assurance. Lord, help us to stay anchored and help us to have confidence to enter into your presence, Lord, now and forever. And we pray all of this in your good and holy name. Amen. Hope is a beautiful thing. And when Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, was born, he brought hope into our world. Hope that we could be saved. Hope that our futures could be brighter. I hope, kind of funny way to say it, <laughs> I hope you experience the presence and the love of Jesus Christ this Advent and Christmas season. I, I hope he fills you with his hope that you never give up. No matter what this world is throwing your way, place your faith and trust and hope in Jesus Christ for a brighter future. Jesus Christ can be that firm foundation upon which we build our lives, that anchors our lives and keeps us strong and close to him and, and keeps us a good person. And I want to share that hope of Jesus Christ with the world, and I hope you do too. Every Sunday, we have the ushers come forward to receive, the, to receive our offerings, and our offerings are collected so that this church can stay open and continue to preach and teach the Word of God and help people grow in their faith. It can be used to help the poor and the needy, the struggling, and give them hope. It's used to share the good news with Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ with people in this community and all over the world. Today, I pray that you'll give so we can continue to spread the hope of Jesus Christ with those around us. At this time, I invite the ushers to come forward and let us give as the Holy Spirit leads us.
Father God, we thank you for loving us so much that you would send us your son who came into this world to give us hope. Now may we be children filled with hope and ready to share the hope and love and truth of Jesus Christ with those around us. Take these gifts now that we offer, you to, offer to you, Lord. Use them to bring hope to people's hearts and minds and souls. Use them to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others in this world. Use it to help those that are struggling. Use it to share your love and to, and to bring glory and honor to your son, Jesus Christ. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, today being the first Sunday of the month, we take Holy Communion. And I thought we'd do it a little bit different today. And in your bulletin, it says that we're doing communion at the rails. That is not true. We're going to pass it through the pews today. Um, but I want to read you some stuff from you, to, read to you some stuff from uh, the Book of Worship. And it's the liturgy for the Advent Communion. I just want to read part of it. Father God, you created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed, in, breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us th through your prophets. And in the fullness of time, you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang, glory to you in the highest and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name, saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem, and there found no room. So Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable, as in the poverty of a stable, Jesus was born. So by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of a woman, on the night long ago. So on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And now, 2,000 years later, we who follow the Lord Jesus Christ still remember what he did for us on that night, what he did for us on the cross and how he rose again three days later. And we take this bread and we take this juice remembering what Jesus Christ did for us. Let's take a moment, let's pray, then I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward, and we will receive Holy Communion together. Let us pray. Father God, we do thank you for your love and for sending your Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, we thank you for coming into this world to be the Savior of the world and, and to bring us hope and to help us to realize how much you love us and, how, and how, to what lengths you would go to save us. Today, as we take the bread and the juice and as we eat it and as we drink it and we take it into our bodies, may we take Jesus Christ into our lives and may you fill us with your hope and with your love, Lord Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As the ushers are coming forward, too, let me remind you that we practice open communion here. If you, you do not have to be a member of this church or of this denomination in order to take communion with us. We consider this to be the Lord's table. And if you want to draw closer to Jesus Christ, we invite you to the table. And we invite you to take and eat. If you need gluten-free elements, please raise your hands and I will bring those to you as the ushers pass out the bread.
This bread reminds us that the body of Jesus Christ was broken for us at Calvary. Let us take and eat and remember and be thankful. Is there anybody needing the gluten-free elements? Please raise your hand at this time. As you take the juice, may it remind you that the blood of God, Jesus Christ, his son, was shed for you at Calvary to pay the penalty for your sins and for mine. Let us take and drink and be thankful. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the gift of your son. We thank you for the gift of salvation that your son brought. We thank you for the gift of hope that Jesus Christ and the, and the good news message gives us. Let us leave this place today filled with your hope, ready to share your hope and, and the message of Jesus Christ with the world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to close our time together by singing our, a hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It can be found on page 211 of your hymnals, or you can follow along with the words on the screen. We're going to sing verses 1 through 4. And I invite you to stand at this time and let us sing.
Jesus came to bring hope. And as you go throughout this week, we pray that you go in his peace and his love and his joy, but also his hope, now and forever. Amen.